is part four, part four in this series. Part three was yesterday. So in part three, I did all the, the wallboard and the red guard. That all got put up. It's dried overnight, it's had time to cure. And now the tiling process begins. Um, the, the, the demo and the build back process usually take at least as long, if not longer, than the actual tiling. The tiling will go relatively quickly. So the floor tile goes first, as I've already alluded to a couple of times. Um, how you do your layout is really kind of up to you. There are a lot of people out there that get focused in on the math and, you know, want, want one sheet. These are uh, sheets of tile. So, for example, they'll have one sheet smack dab in the middle so that those four tile end up being taken out and wrapped around the drain and then all the cuts are what they are. But in this case, you see the math doesn't work that way. So um, th there is no um, rules as far as how you do your layout of your floor tile. Generally speaking, when I walk into a bathroom and in this direction I'm walking in, this is what gets seen the most. So I tend to focus on this area, whether it be the floor or the walls, I tend to focus in on this area the most, since it gets seen the most. So in other words, if there are cuts to be made, and in this case there probably are, then those cuts would not be over here, they would be over there. Um, since the math doesn't work out to be symmetrical, and even if it did, what, because what, I've already kind of done the layout of here, so there's probably about half an inch, maybe a little bit more than half an inch, about three quarters of an inch to slide that tile in on both sides. If I did that, then I have about an inch and a half gap. And if I split the inch and a half gap, then I've got three quarters of a tile pieces that I have to set up under the wall because remember there's a gap that the tile slides up under. So I'd have to cut off slivers of three quarter of an inch tile all the way down this way and all the way down this way in order for that to work. Getting those three quarters up against the pan liner up under that gap would be very, very difficult. So rather than do that, there's going to be an inch and a half, about an inch and a half cut or so that probably won't be noticed once the, the wall tile is set. So the way I have it set up now would be symmetrical. Um, and it could still work, but again, you see that gap that's way back there. And I, I don't want to just fill that in with grout later. I want that to be solid tile. And even if I didn't, the wall tile is going to overlap. And of course it's going to overlap more than that because you have your thin set and all that stuff that you're going to deal with. So the end result will probably be more like this. You'll see about half of a tile. And then on this side, you'll probably see about, I don't know, about three quarters of a tile the way I'm going to do it. Um, because I don't want that, that gap on both sides. I would rather have a solid piece of tile and then a larger piece on this side again because this side isn't seen as much. So the discrepancy will be minute at best. As I said, you'll see about half of one of these tile which are two by two, so you'll see half of that, and then over here you'll probably see about a three quarters of the tile. That's how I chose to do it. How you do it is really, really doesn't matter as long as you're happy with it. Um, but again, when the wall tile goes up, you'll see that this wall tile will overlap onto this tile, and this, this tile will actually go up against the pan liner. So. I know I'm being redundant. I've said the same thing about three times already, and I apologize for that, but I'm just trying to make it very crystal clear on how I do things according to, you know, my layouts and all that stuff, and yours could vary. There's no, there's no science to this. You could do it any way you want. You could do it on a diagonal. You could do it, you know, probably three or four different ways, but um, this is a way that I'm, the layout that I just proposed is the way that I'm going to end up doing it. Once this is set and dried overnight, then all this will get grouted. And once that's grouted, then I can start um, doing up the wall tile. This should be grouted first. I'm not going to bother setting my wall tile until this is completely finished. Um, and then my wall tile will start going up. Um, I have some bull nose that are being fashioned out of this tile as we speak. And those bull nose will be ready tomorrow, so I'll be able to fashion out the bull nose and frame around here and I'll be able to also do the bull nose on my knee wall. So the knee wall will get bull nose on both sides of the knee wall. Uh, bull nose will go around here and the bull nose will go eight foot up um, to that line right there all the way down. 
And that's the process, and that's what I'm gonna get started on right now. So I started to show the process of setting this tile, but it became a little more difficult than I thought. Trying to trying to have the camera way up here, there was no nothing to attach it to, and it just became kind of a, a distraction to my work. So I'm going to put a link right up there on how to set shower floor tile. It's a two by two as well, and you can actually see the process kind of fast motion, I guess. I did that video a couple years ago, but um, just click on that link and you'll see how it's done. Anyway, uh, there is a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're setting tile on the floor. The floor is never exactly, exactly sloped down perfectly unless you use Pitch Perfect um, or some type of product like that. So you need to have your levels. You need to trowel out. Oh, speaking of trowel, use a quarter inch trowel when you're setting this tile as you saw me start to do. Um, so the quarter inch trowel is a definite and and then you're going to trowel it out to you know the best you can to an area that you can work with. Um, I usually work with a larger area because I'm so used to doing this it doesn't bother me but you might want to work with a smaller area. The other thing is you want to keep a couple levels here. I have a two foot level and oh before I forget you saw me use a float too. So this rubber float that's usually used for grouting this is what you do. You just as you saw on there you just push down that tile because everywhere one of these mats line up to another mat you know you might have lippage or something and so pushing down on the tile gently all the way across as you set the tile will ensure that you don't have lippage if you have enough thin set under there which you should um, and then of course you want to make sure your level is straight not straight flat across the tile again no lippage no dips or anything like that and you want to see that your bubble let me see if I can close up on that. You want to see that your bubble is offset. So when we say a quarter inch per foot, it's, there's no science to that. You, you could measure it, I suppose, if you wanted to, but you know the reality is if your bubble goes way up on the back end, that's a good thing. Um, so you're going to do that on all four sides. Again, make sure you're... Oop, i got to back up my camera. Uh, make sure your level is flat going across these tiles so if there's no dips or anything like that. Make sure that your bubble goes all the way back you'll be good to go. Um, all four sides again, this way as well. Flat, flat level, bubble off, that's a good thing. And then a smaller foot level, you might wanna use if you have a smaller shower area. These are good if you have a wall or something that's, that's right here and you can't get one of these in there, um, which I often use one of these, same thing. You know, you want that bubble you know, to go off. Of course, you know, your eye is pretty good. Mine is, is fairly good at, at figuring out if I have a slope, but you want to double check yourself with levels. You can't have too many levels, and you cannot have too many sizes of levels either. Torpedo levels also work well. Um, so all of this is set. And the process takes me roughly about um, an hour. Depends on how big the floor is, an hour to an hour and a half or so. Um, and then once everything is done, I just go through with a little little razor blade and get out the little boogers that are in between here because tomorrow I'm going to be grouting and those little boogers are going to get really hard by tomorrow. So it's better to clean out all your lines um, before that. Um, again, was I referring to, I think, my second or third video. When I, do, when I do around the drain, I always cut little circular pieces around the drain with a little taper on the edge. And it's a little higher up than the drain flange itself um, and so as I said before that's for positive water flow and if the floor ever settles then it's never going to settle more than that little quarter of an inch that I got going on there so that way I won't have pooling or homeowner won't have pooling years from now around the drain that's just my thing I don't see a lot of other tilers doing that they they take very much pride which you know looks nice of cutting perfect circulars around the drain flush up against the drain cap and, and it looks great but for me it's just not practical I would rather have a positive water flow thing going on 
um, than to ever have water going around there. And you see the little tiny cuts I put in there? Little tiny cuts are not necessary. All this, the inside portion of this is going to be grouted. Uh, but if the gap is, is a little large, then I do do the little tiny cuts in there. Um, and as I said, tomorrow will, will be the grouting portion. Um, as I showed you already, there's three quarters, about three quarters of an inch of tile that I had to set all along this wall here, which I referred to earlier, because this is a full tile, and that's a full tile, and this is where you come into the bathroom, so I want to see full tile on, on both walls coming in. And then if you end up with a cut, you put them where you can't see them. Same on the front here, you know, full tile on the back, and then your cut's in the front. And then on the side here is about three quarter inch cuts. But as I said, the tile is going to overlap that grout line, and so I'm not really concerned about that, that cut. It won't quite go halfway up that tile, and this tile will go up halfway up that tile, but in the end, it'll be insurmountable. You won't notice it that much. So anyway, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I'm doing the 2x2 two two inside of the niche wall, too. I should have done that already. Um, tomorrow I'm picking up my bullnose and I will frame that out. This needs to be, tomorrow actually I will not only frame that out, but I will, I will finish out the tile inside of the niche and then frame everything out so it's done. Then I can start the process of working my way up the wall with the tile and all the tile will wrap around the niche. So always do your niche tile first. Well, you don't have to, that's the way I do it. But that's the process. And so this is, as I said, day four. Day five, I'm actually going to get started doing the wall tile, and um, we'll probably go into day six on this. But um, I'm out of here for today. Let this dry up and grow out tomorrow.